I didn't know these existed. So, uh, the story goes, excuse the knife. Someone recommended this when I was on the unboxing channel. Like, you need this knife, and it doesn't even, like, lock. It's just a, like, very basic, sharp, no, I don't know. Maybe I'll link that in the description. Oh, it stood up. So, the story goes, I had 280 Pros for nine years before I started this whole journey of headphones journey. And the pair I ordered was probably 15 years ago. And when the new pair came out, I was like, ooh, 280 Pros, new edition. So I got them, and I fucking love them. Got red and, and blue marker, and I put it on top of the white out pen, white paint pen. And was, that's the way you know which side is which, because it's real hard to figure out that little R there. And the little L there. So it's like, ooh, good. I mean, the wire goes on one side, but fuck it. I still want to see that. Love them, and love them even more in a tube. Thus, the Utah Roger is out and the Solaris is on, and the Dark Voice is on, and this is the HD300. Because in the review of that, people said, hey, you gotta do the MT5 by Yamaha, and you gotta do the HD300. Had no idea these existed. I, I didn't even know there, like, there isn't, like, an H, there's an HD200 as well. There's a cheaper version of this. I believe there's an HD200, HD280, HD300, and I've done the HD380, and I was like, all right, I, I didn't remember those, this is right. But I wanted to know, because this is this is something new, this is something special. And um, so I picked them up immediately. And they're twice the price of the 280 Pros. Two times, two, two times. These are $200, those are $100. They had better perform twice as well, or at least give some sort of upgrade. So let's look at the build, let's actually compare it. Let's just bring those old ones back on. So, well, the structure, like the actual shape, get off the, it's, oh, let's talk about the wires in a second. The actual shape are very similar, where they do that thing where they bump out really wide, and they clamp roughly the same as far as linearity goes. The build of them is remarkably similar, same piece here and here, same exact headband, so you're not getting anything new there. The uh, fork is a little bit, the yoke is a little bit wider to hold a different type of cup. The cup has a little more depth to it than the 280. So a little more room for the driver to play around. The pads are definitely an imp improvement. These are these are actual pads. These feel like, they're, they're, are they memory foam? Uh, tough call. But it feels like actual, like even if it's pleather, which is protein leather, it feels like that. Whereas these, um, feel like a garbage bag was stretched over some foam. So there's that. Same thing with the top headpiece. This is that cheap, shitty foam inside of like a garbage bag, and I know it's gonna flake. Because my original set had the same sort of pads, and they flaked in like three years, and you end up with like little black flakes. So if you don't want to have black flakes, you gotta get the 300s, which have, oh, real nice pads. Same foam inside, just nice pads, and they go with the two bump method. And you could actually peel this off. It's like a Ziploc bag. You can just peel this off to replace it if you wanted to, or peel it off. And there's a million different ways you can go about improving comfort. But you know what? Why improve the comfort? They're perfect. It's Taconi Nuggets pre-installed. Um, they have ex almost. I'm, I was sitting here humming to myself, which has probably made me look like a lunatic to my cat. But I was trying to assess if the 30 decibels of attenuation are 32. Same on this, and I'm pretty sure it is. You put this on, and all of a And I'm a little upset, because I was just a can jam, and I was the only human being in the building who had not only had these, like they were, these Neumanns were not on, oh my God, Chewbacca, are you everywhere? They were not on anyone's table to audition equipment. No one even knew what they were. One guy was like, oh, those are 630 VBs? And I'm like, fuck no. Fuck no. No, no. And I put them on so many people's heads. They probably have, like, some sort of weird coronavirus. But I actually put that set because I have two sets because they're so good, I bought another one. Got to balance one. Said I was going to balance it. Got to balance it. And they're on the table because Neumann is owned by Sennheiser. And since Neumann is owned by Sennheiser, Neumann's engineers work for Sennheiser. So when Sennheiser says, hey, fix this shit, Neumann's engineers do. Now they did this out of like scrap parts and it's amazing. And I have to compare it to these, obviously. I compared the 280 Pros to the Neumann's 
And I was like, wow, that's fucking remarkably close in signature. And now if I put on the 300 Pros and compare it, wow, that's remarkably close to Neumann's. In signature except, here's the thing. I think these are more accurate than the 280 Pros. In tonality alone, there's very little to do with like low end. They feel more true to the monitoring. Here, here's how I work this out. These are 100, these are 200, these are 500. The $100 ones are actually the more fun one of the group. And when you throw them on a tube, they have a little more low end kick to them, which is astonishing. And then you get some separation, soundstage, and honestly, one of the better headphones I've ever tubed. Solid state tube, here's your comparison headphone. 300 does the same thing. Just have to know this. Take the highs, take the mid-range, tweak it more towards neutral, and take that low one that might have been slightly elevated, flatten it out, these are flat. The tube still affects them, it still does more width, more soundstage, more excitement, but these feel like the ones you have to get if you're actually working. If you're gonna get these, and you're gonna solid state them, you're fine, that's great, do it. Yeah, I, you know, if you work a college student, 100 bucks, all you need to spend. If you're a little bit beyond college student and you actually want proper, accurate focus, and you know, I need to rely on this, well then you're, if you're on the budget, you're gonna get the 300s. If you're not in a budget, you're gonna get the Neumanns because that's what I use. I will say, of these three, the Neumanns are the least fucking comfortable because I use that, just, I don't even know, it's raw. It's, I had these outside because I was walking through Manhattan to get to the can jam, and it was like 15 degrees that first day. And memory foam gets stiff when it gets cold. And this was a rock. This was like unpushable. It was like, uh, and I had to wear it on my head for like 20 minutes. I was using these to test out amplifiers at CanJam. Zeos, the, the motherfuck Pantera, could have chosen any headphone to bring along with him to CanJam to listen to the $5,000 Rupert Nev a Riptide or Rekshaw or whatever the hell it was. There's tons of good, uh, the whole um, Violetric new, new stuff. These are the headphones I brought because these tell me what an amplifier is doing. And I was amazed they weren't there. And I was amazed I went to the Sennheiser booth and talked to them about it. And they're like, oh, those aren't considered, you know, part of our consumer line. Those are more the professional line. Who fucking cares what line they're in? They're amazing. Amazing. Oh, I also regret one other thing about CanJam because I'm, I'm not going to really... I might do a podcast with DMS, but it'll probably have happened before this video comes out. Is uh, I wish I would have contacted Koss and be like, yo, Koss, send me a box of like 50 KPH 30Is. And I would have gotten the boxes, ripped them apart, put them in like a bag, and as I was just walking around CanJam, I would have placed them on the tables next to all these expensive amplifiers and shit. It'd be like a viral marketing campaign. The Rupert Nev amplifier that was $5,000 that looked like a piece of Art Deco furniture on these headphones. Right back to my mouth. God gave it back to me. Amazing. Like, just, I don't know. And they're only $500, and they fucking sound like that. So anything that sounds like that, I'm repraising these hard. The wallpaper, notice wallpaper and how hard I praise these. And then I could pick up 280s or 300 and say, yeah, they're aiming at that. And they're getting close. Um, we got to talk about some uh, quirks and features, or failures, as I like to call them. Do these also lay down? I don't, yeah, these do. Okay, so we got, they, they fold this way or they fold this way, or in the case of these, they fold this way as well, if you extend them all the way, which is like, that's kind of cool. You could turn them into like a ball. I believe these do everything exactly the same except for that. Do they do that? Oh yeah, they do do that. They do do that. They do do that. Um, as far as left and right indicators, which is one of the things I really complained about, it's exactly the fucking same. It's this little tiny R there, not here, not on the outside, not in these fucking clear panels, nothing, nowhere, nowhere, just, just don't need it. It's fine, it's fine, I'm fine, you're fine. The cost of the pads are better, they are a bit more comfortable, and of course I can't hear myself, I'm gonna switch through some music, oh. I almost want to master music because of how good these headphones are at showing me. 
more fun, a little more reverb, a little more width, dark voice. I'm gonna switch here now. Impact up. Maybe a little bit sharper. There's a lot of power in this unit. And these are rather easy to drive, but now. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. I now have three tube amps running on my table, just to tell you that these work well with a tube. Um, let's look at the box for a second, because I made a big stink about not having the box for the 280s. I want to show you why I didn't have the box for the 280s. If this could have been a plain brown box, I think Sennheiser would have done it. Because these are basically military issue. Like here, you're, you're lucky, it has a little pop-up thing, you're lucky it even has that. These are designed to buy for a studio. Joe Rogan's got the 280 Pros, you could have the 300 Studios, if you're doing singing, you could have all these. So here's it. It's just a folded piece of cardboard with a thing and some books on that weird, like, angle. And you're done. That's, that's, the, that's the end of it. Um, this is the instruction booklet with the Quick Start Guide, which is in... No, it's all one language, okay. And it works for the HG300 Pro and the, and the Protect. I don't have the Protect, and the Protect and I'll show you what it should have. It adds a switch that lets you put on limiter active guard, a trademark. Um, we're gonna talk about the cable, I think now. Anything else? Shows you how to remove the padding, shows you how to uninstall and reinstall the pads. It clicks in, I'll pull the pad off. I'll pull a pad off for you. Click, click, click. Very exposed driver, you, go, you could actually touch the membrane. Recessed in almost like a, um, a waveguide. Little pins over here and there. Some three screws to hold it in place. That, that's it, it's not even a big driver, 40 millimeter. Giving you a little more space between your ear and the driver than these did. Um, unfortunately, because of the way the pad mounts, it's literally, there's an inner ring and there's the plastic ring that bounces into the inner rings. You're not gonna be able to swap pads easily or at all, which let's face it, if you're using these for work, don't. You're gonna affect the measurements, it's gonna be bad. Does that go back on? Is it ever gonna go back on? Uh, this is what the risks you take when you're making a review live. I say live, but I don't edit, so it's live. Facebook is basically is live. Um, so, okay, put that down for a second. Here's my first issue. That's the biggest issue. I should, I should get to the bit. So the wire on the 280 Pro it's attached. Yeah, 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 we all hate it. Detached cable, but it was this really, really heavy, you know, extending, coiled cable, and it's really well built, and I like it. I do like it, I lived in it for many years. I wish this wasn't quite as long, I wish it was like maybe that much, and then, but you could always just loop this up if it really felt like it. Enter the 300s with a a detachable cable. Big, big, huge air quotes. And you look and it's like, oh, there's a plug. And then you look at it and go, oh, I gotta get a Torx screw wrench. So um, there's, there's screws I took out. It's a T10 Torx wrench for your detachable cable. Nice and convenient. So you detach on the sides of the cable left and right. I was pointing out that the cable uh, also is not coiled at all. It's the only cable, it's attached, it's the only cable. It is a straight cable. The thin part is not as nice as the straight part of the coiled one on the 280. So it's got some janks in it. It's rather short comparatively. I, I got up and walked to the, walked out of the room with the, the 280 Pro. It seemed a little better. There is a coil, however, right here. Um. Two things. Number one, I fucking love that there's a coil here. No, that's just number one. I'm the periapt, heart audio cable, uh, uh, Viking weave. Uh, who else is making cables out there? Any cable maker's watching this. I love this thing. I love this little thing. Because you're going to get caught, and if it's a straight cable, it gets caught, and you eh. But just like, look at that. How many coils? Is that four? Five, maybe? Lines up with five? 
It's just a little a little strainer leaf. It's like a little ding 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 ding, ding pigtail strainer leaf. Do you want to pull the plug out? You want to pull the, you want to you want me to pull the plug out so you could show you the the what um Sennheiser? Why is there a two, four, six, eight pin, eight pin connector? What am I looking at? What the fuck am I, what the fuck am I looking at? Like I, this is the winner. Sennheiser's always been a bit of a dick when it comes to like wires. 600s have those two pin cables that luckily Fostex also uses, but in reverse. The HD800s have those fucking annoying little ones that are so expensive you can't even buy them. But this, whatever this is doing with a notch so you can't reverse it, like, and it, the thing is, here's the thing, it says Sennheiser there, and it actually, that word Sennheiser disappears when you plug it in, so you don't even see it, so you just see that, you have to see the word Sennheiser, what, what is this cable? So it's replaceable. From with the exact same, like the exact same cable. There's no like, oh, even my Neumanns. I'm using a cable from Amazon that I took a um, a rotary sander to, an oscillating sander, and I made it just slightly smaller so it would fit. But this is a nicer cable than the one for the HD6. By the way, he's taking an HD6 cable, which is Sennheiser, because it doesn't take an Audio Technica cable. Because why the fuck would it? Ha ha ha! So I had to like sand this down with an orbital sander so that it would fit and lock in. But then I could use this really nice fabric cable, which I dragged that to catch him. But this thing, oh, what the fuck, why? Like, th that has to take up more room than if you just, maybe it didn't? Does it have to be flat? Did it have to have no in insertable length? I mean, it's just, a, I thought it was gonna be three contacts. It's eight contacts. But you have to get out with a Torx screw. Two Torx, all right, I'm putting it back in. Uh, whatever. whatever. Uh, it is what it is. As far as sound goes, these are more neutral, more balanced. I th I'm gonna listen again. I don't want to just keep saying things unless I'm actively listening. So I'm gonna plug this into here. Actually, you know what? No, we're gonna go tube amp versus tube amp. We're gonna do HD300s versus HD280s. Because I want to hear them on a tube, because I, I think these are automatically better solid state for doing actual work. Even though these have more bass, these are gonna be more people's choice, but there is enough difference in at least the pads to say, okay, the build is a little a little baby bit better. Although I'm, I wonder if you could swap 300 pads into 280s. Static X, push it, outcast, prototype, overseer velocity shift, mm. U2 elevation. Let me see, hold on. UB40, the way you do things, the way you do the things you do. That's a very long title. Enjoying that, next. Ugh. Undo. I have to I have to know if it's the tube amp doing that because put this in unit. I I think if you're gonna buy these, either one of these for fun. 280 Pro is still the way to go. 280 Pro is still the way to go. These are probably a touch more accurate in the uppers and the mid-range. Just a touch. Double the cost and doesn't perform as enjoyably on a tube. Buck. I wanted to like these more. I wanted these to just be automatically better in every category. Every category. But the 280 Pros are just more pleasing to listen to. Oh, the reason I had the knife out was not for the wire. I wasn't gonna cut the wire up. In the, in the, in the, it's because I was talking about the Protect, the HD300 Protect. What you do is you wedge out these pieces of acrylic. Come on, you bitch. Which, 
sure you're supposed to not use a fucking sharp ass knife. It gone. There it is. But there is where the on off switch should be. And it's just empty because this is not the protect. This is just a pro. And I thought about it and I went, oh, oh, that's a cool thing. Like they have it on both sides because I you know they only make one cup and they reverse it. Even though this one has a hole and this one doesn't. I'm going to pop this one out. This one actually comes out way easier than that one for some reason. Um, I took it out and I thought this would be a clear piece of Lexan. And I, I was like, oh, that's so if, you know, Joe Rogan's podcast <clears throat> or WXQP Cincinnati or something could put their logo in the back and put the clear Lexan back over it, it would look like they have official headphones. Like these are the official headphones of QX, WKHB, D, uh, Detroit. Or Z reviews. So they don't because I figured, okay, it's black back there. Maybe this is like a sticker that I could peel off the edge. No. I just took my knife and went, fuck it, Z. So I scratched a Z into the back of it. And now there's a Z in the front of it. Ah, what a missed opportunity, Sennheiser. Because, I mean, why? I mean, I understand you're trying to cover a switch on one side. Which, honestly, the switch could have been in with the driver like in there there's plenty of space pop a pad off didn't need to do this and if you're gonna do this just i i found something better for you to do like instead of having it say it only says hd 300 pro on one side also that's why the other side is blank like why have a blank insert with no purpose seemingly no purpose in life just just, just. now it says z that was clear I gotta cut out little anime figures, but the anime figure, they would be amazing. I mean, you could probably take the back of this and legit scrape off all of it, but you gotta scratch the Lexan, it's not gonna look right. So it, it's one of those like, <sighs> between that being weird, the wire being fucking, I mean that, the dog, this, hi Chewbacca, how you doing? Good for you. I'll make chicken when I'm done. I'm making chicken when I'm done. That's amazing. Right here. This is the best part of the HD300s. Boom. You found it. The fact that it goes in with a Torx is like, haha, there's a big notch so you don't fuck it up. And then the comforts, again, a little bit, just a, t a tiny baby bit better. Because they use real pads that I'm... See, this uses a strap around the outside. So you could change the pads legitimately on this. I've tried a few. Don't like it. Leave them alone. As much as I'm gonna tell you they're gonna flake off and be bad, leave them alone. These use pop-on pads, which you can't really replace. So we're all fucked. Everything's fucked. At least you got a nice wallpaper. Sound number for this in the description. I, I don't wanna keep harking on it because not enough of it has changed from like a build perspective. Certainly not the wire. I, I like the wire on the original with the, with the coil. If you're gonna give me a coil, give me a coil. Don't give me a smaller, jankier straight with that. Get again. This is this is amazing, but uh, uh, uh. so um, yard sale probably three hundreds. They still work on a tube. They're still they're more professional sounding. The thing that the five hundred that the uh, five hundreds the five hundred dollars set of Neumann NDH twenties do. These have low end, but not as accurate uppers. This has way more accurate uppers, but no low end. This is everything. This has low end, mid range, upper, has some sound stage, also works with a fucking tube. Like if I just do like this, which switches that button, switches the output to that DAC instead of these DAC, because it uses its own built in thousand dollar DAC. And then, oh, Beethoven, Wellington's Victory Battle. It needs high gain. Wait. Yes, these sound like $500 fucking headphones. These sound... These sound like the headphones I brought to Candram. And that should be on tables. That goddamn Rupert Nev fucking table should have had a set of these permanently on it. I'm yelling because I can't hear myself. And this is getting real... <laughs> Sorry if I was yelling. 
But um, yes. These are still the buy. These are still the buy. I just, to, to reference what I did like an hour and a half ago, I just did the MT, MT5. And with the pad mod, I think those sound amazing and big and warm and soft and oof. And then M40Xs might just be done. But these are still better headphones. They're, they're not going to be as comfortable as those with pad swap. But oh my God, what they can do with a tube. You put a tube on them, they're amazing. Ama actual enjoyment listening. Can you do mixing and mastering? Absolutely, yes. These do mixing and mastering better than those. These do the best of everything. They're the best of everything. I'll, linked in the description. Oh, fuck. There it is. God forbid I'm not able to screw my goddamn wire back in. How easy is this? Okay, let's do it. Yeah, this is this convenient, Sennheiser. Thanks. Couldn't possibly have put, like, I don't know, a normal wire on it. I'm mean, too much effort. You know, they can't possibly engineer that. And I don't screw one side in all the way. You want to do both in gently and then tighten, tighten, tighten. So that it doesn't kink it sideways. I'm, I'm lear you're learning things. So when you're putting a tire back on a car, you always do the star method. If you have five lugs, you go one, two, three, four, five, one, one, two. You tighten again and again and again. If you do all the way tight on one, the wheel's gonna go like this. When you tighten the other one, it's gonna go, ah, it's not gonna quite be flat and level. And you're learning, you're learning things, it's fine. So yeah, anyway, um, sound demos in the description, that wallpaper, which is very, very important, is in the description. This is really, Sennheiser, you are one of my favorite headphone companies in the fact that you make the HD 600s, the 660s, the 58X, the 280 Pros. Um, what else? I guess the Orpheus is still like the best thing I've ever heard, but a little bit un unreachable. And then the Neumanns, you own Neumann. You own Neumann, which is why the Neumanns are your Neumanns. If you didn't own Neumann, it would be like you didn't be able to put that notch in there. So my, what I'm saying is basically, thank you, these are great, 280 Pros instead, or just fucking jump to the nut, jump to those and put them on a tube for fun. I use these for every sound demo, but then I plug them into th that or that or that, and that's when I actually listen. Anyway, that's it. Uh, check out my Patreon, my subscribe show, you get to see these reviews early. Get to see me complain early. Um, the $5 tier lets you into the yard sale. These will be in the yard sale. I'll probably hold on to these for the foreseeable future because I have tube amps to test and class A amps to test. And that's, that's what you gotta do. You gotta hold on to the headphones that are revealing. These are revealing. These are revealing. And while these are revealing, I, I like the way these sound better. So boom. So yard sale, first to the 10th. $5 tier on either site gets you in. You put your bid and it's a blind sound auction. See these reviews early. Ask me any questions you want on platform. $10 tier, private Telegram chat. Those people know as soon as I'm, actually before I'm even starting a review, they know my opinion on something. If you need to know it, just ask. $10 tier is behind the scenes. Easy access to my phone. Bunch of great guys, met a bunch of them at Can Jam. They all shook my hand and then I used spray because God knows, they've been shaking other people's hands. I don't wanna, go. I don't wanna get sick. I don't wanna get sick. Um, there are higher tiers. And the higher tiers are going to be used coming up. I'm announcing that now. There's, if you $5 tier, $10 tier are the standard ones, 15, 30 and higher. Um, let's just say I have to work out how to do a lot of shipping, a lot of shipping because uh, hoo -hoo, have fun. Anyway, that wallpaper, crop it out, put it on your phone, be a badass. Uh, links to all the stuff I've seen and the sound demo down there and we're moving on. I'll see you tomorrow.